They call it the HP Envy X360. The benchmarks are in, the thoughts have been noted on the build quality and performance. Let's get right into this review. This is the Ryzen 7 5700U model with integrated graphics. Now, because of that, I was slightly disappointed by some of the performance specs, be it anything that requires heavy rendering. So right off the bat, if you're looking for this computer for 3D modeling, I would not go for it. I would immediately push you towards something like the HP Omen, which has a good, strong, powerful, dedicated GPU. And once that review comes out, you can check it out in the YouTube cards above. But right off the bat, let's jump right into the build quality. First and foremost, I love the new softer edges. They are so smooth. And as you can see from last year's model, the rounded edges don't catch your fingers as much and just make for more comfortable laptop to handle. While we have this thing up on its side, let's take a look at the ports. Comes with the USB Type A, HDMI, USB Type C, which is not Thunderbolt 3, headphone jack, and on the other side, we have a SD card slot, USB Type A, and the AC power adapter. Now, do note that you can charge the laptop using the USB C. I do not have a USB Type C charger, so unfortunately, I did not test that, but it charges very quickly with the AC power adapter and has a fantastic battery life. While web browsing and doing productivity tasks, as well as good battery life while streaming video on YouTube. Now, for 4K video editing and Photoshop, it doesn't have the most amazing battery life, but better than most laptops I've reviewed on my channel. So for creative tasks, I recommend bringing that charger along with you as it will not last all day. All aluminum on the top cover, bottom cover, side panels, and keyboard deck. There's a little bit of give on the top cover, but not a lot. Now, when you open the laptop, you're gonna have to use two hands because if you don't, well, that's gonna happen. So definitely two hands is important. Now, one thing I wanna point out though, you saw the screen flex, but this is pretty awesome. This laptop has the least amount of screen flex as far as this motion that I've ever seen. It's such a firm and solid screen. However, it does bounce a little bit as you can see there, but it does not bounce when you're typing. So as I'm typing, the screen stays nice and still. And of course, this is a convertible laptop. So you can do that and use it as a little presentation thing or touch screen, whatever you might wanna do. Okay, the next thing to consider is the press along the top here. Also good, press in the middle, not a big deal. This laptop, like I said, for the all aluminum chassis, is fantastic, firm, strong. A lot of times you'll get a hold of a aluminum laptop and you're like, man, it just, it feels so cheap, so thin and chintzy. This laptop does not feel thin and chintzy in my opinion. So one thing I wanted to correct about my unboxing is I said that the top vents were actually speakers, and this is incorrect. The speakers are right here on the bottom cover. But they should be vents, right? But unfortunately, when you turn the computer over and you take it apart, they're not really venting to anything. The fans are in the middle, which makes sense because the main vent on the bottom cover is in the middle. Um, but where are these top grills venting? Are they pulling air in? Are they pushing air out? It's it looks to me as if they are more for show than anything. The other available model of the HP NVX 360 has the vent along the bottom of the screen, so the top of the keyboard deck, which makes sense because this right here would be the top of the keyboard deck. So that vent would actually be useful in pulling air in or pushing air out of the chassis. The vents along the side don't really make sense. So this model runs substantially cooler than this model. And because of that, your only main vent is actually right here along the back panel of the chassis, which is why we are seeing quite poor thermals on this laptop this year. I was very disappointed by the thermals, to be totally honest. It got up to 95 degrees Celsius during the 4K export. Um, during the Photoshop benchmarks, it ran warm. I would definitely recommend if you're somebody who wants a cool laptop to go with the model that has the vent along the top of the keyboard deck because this vent actually vents your laptop because the fans are right here in the middle. Okay, so very important to consider. Moving down to the keyboard deck, it is fantastic. It's very reminiscent of the HP Omen, and if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know I'm a very big fanboy. Um, I like this simplified layout. There is no numpad, which is great for creators. It just kind of gets in the way, but you also have your toggle switches, and you do have fingerprint sign-in, so you can sign in with your fingerprint.
Now, there is a button cutoff switch for the webcam, but there is not a technically manual switch to cover it. So you just kind of have to trust that it actually is turned off. Here is the webcam test. As you can tell, it kind of changes colors, um, but it has pretty good visuals overall. It'll be decent for you know your average video conferencing, and also you can hear the audio here as well. The trackpad is good. It's not great, only for the mere reason that's a little bit loud. Nineteen percent bigger than last year, which is a big upgrade. So this laptop continues to be made more and more with a creator focus in mind. The screen is also a big upgrade for creators this year. You can get a ninety-nine percent sRGB screen. That's a slight upgrade in price, but still, for under a thousand dollars with that upgrade, this laptop really shows off. There's not a lot of laptops, especially thin and light ones, that are under a thousand dollars that can get that high of color gamut range. As mentioned in the intro, this is the Ryzen 7 5700U model with an upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM, which in my opinion is almost perfect for Photoshop. As you see, it really hits kind of the best bang for buck right around the 630 points range inside of Puget Systems. If you upgrade to 32 gigs, you're only gonna get about a 60 point increase. If you upgrade to 64 gigs, you're only gonna get about a 100 point increase. So really, this is optimized for creators, in my opinion, at 16 gigs of RAM, which is great for the old budget. If you want more in-depth specs like running the fan modes, different RAM configurations for photo editing and video editing, then definitely check out my dedicated reviews for each of those types of use case. Jumping into the simulated benchmarks, this laptop really stands out even amongst some of the big boys with the high performance processors and dedicated GPUs. Checking out Cinebench R20, Cinebench R23, and Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that it's really stepping it up. And this is not just fanboy press. Like this laptop really does pack a punch. Hey there, man. Why don't you gently stroke that like button? Helps us out a lot on this channel. Gets more views to my beautiful chassis. Appreciate it. As I mentioned earlier, if you're thinking about After Effects for this laptop, it's doable, but because of the lack of the dedicated GPU, the render scores were very low. So although it scores a decent After Effects score, I would not recommend it for that use case. Now, is this a 4K or 1080p video editing laptop? In my opinion, 1080p is really the sweet spot. You're gonna have faster export times and much smoother playback. But if you really wanna use it for 4K, know that at full quality playback in Premiere Pro, you're gonna drop about 10,850 frames out of 16,177. But if you drop it down to half quality for your you know, playback timeline, you're gonna only drop 792. So if you do it, your playback at half quality or fourth quality, you could actually be in good hands. However, the export time is a little long at seven minutes versus 1080p at about a minute 34. So the playback at 1080p is also substantially better. At full quality, you'll actually only drop 236 frames with the 16 gigs of RAM installed. So that's why I lean it more towards a 1080p video editing laptop versus 4K. For DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna have smooth playback. It's far more optimized for Ryzen and you're gonna have pretty solid export times as well. With excellent performance paired with great build quality and a color accurate screen, this laptop really packs a punch for creative professionals. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you in the next one.